facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park and have been made possible in part by Ravinia Festival, CJE Senior Life, Gand Music and Sound, current events roundtable. Today we have a treat and this program is probably going to come out before or right after, I should say right after November 4th mm -hmm. or right very close to it. It's going to be a Tuesday and that evening will be the election, show. Election day. So election day and we're going to we're going to kind of guess and, and kind of evaluate and analyze the election before it starts. Because I have a terrific guest today. His name is Richard Reeder, and he is a political commentator and has worked for Mayor, let's see, you were worked for Mayor Byrne, Mary Washington, Mayor Richard M. Daly. You did consulting work for the city of Chicago, and you worked with 20 election campaigns, and you were a, comp a political consultant right. on many. This is really going to be a treat for our viewers today. And welcome. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you okay. for coming it's to nice our to, it's show. It's nice to be here. Yes. And we have so much to discuss. We have all these races. We have the governor's race. We have the the, sen the, the senator's races. We have the um, we we have the Chicago election coming up. Chicago in, in election February. coming up, yeah. uh, and all the uh, the Baker's twelve so far, right. and the uh, mm -hmm. and the, um, the the campaign for president. I mean, there's 12 people running uh, <laughs> for the, for the uh, I can't believe that. And this a is lot this of, a lot of elections coming up. Yes, a lot of elections. Yeah. And it's only 2014. Right, and, and we already got 12 people running for president. Mm -hmm. And yeah. which side would that be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. I, the Republican side? Well, the Republican side. And we, you know, there's an assumption that Hillary Clinton is the... Um, the candidate for the Democratic Party, but we're not considering perhaps a personal issue with Mrs. Clinton. Maybe Mrs. Clinton has had health issues. So what would happen if Mrs. Clinton does not run? It opens up things in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. um, and Vice President Biden is reaching the point in his career that he's almost as old as Ronald Reagan was. For his first term. Yeah, usually when when a president resigns, or not a president resigns, but a president's term is is over with. Right. Usually, the vice president is the candidate, which would be uh, president, vice, vice Joe, president Biden, Joe yeah. Biden. And why why aren't people like oh it's Joe Biden? Why are not people rushing for Joe Biden? Well, a lot I think is is, is age. Uh, Vice President Biden. How old is sometimes, he? How old is he's he? In he is yeah, he's in his early 70s. Yeah, he's in his early 70s. But Reagan was. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. He would be getting reaching that that Ronald Reagan first term age. Yeah. Um, I think Vice President Biden has a reputation, maybe shooting from the mouth a little bit too much, not being that diplomatic. Uh, so that might hurt him. His frankness. Uh, he, See, I always thought, I always thought, Richard, that he was, you know, when you go to the doctor's office uh -huh. for a pediatrician and the nurse gives the shot, yeah. I always thought that he was the nurse giving the shot for <laughs> Obama because I thought he was playing good cop, bad cop, you know, right. and he was the nurse that, right. you know, that he's, he's, has to do yeah, that. And, and he's your, your, your frank-speaking guy from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And uh, he comes across as an average Joe, yeah. you know, average Joe uh, Biden. Joe Biden, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Uh, the liberal part of the Democratic Party, if Hillary Clinton is not the candidate, would love to go with Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. 
Hmm. She's the, the, the darling of the liberal left right now. Really? How did she become such a darling? I mean, well, she was... Anti, uh, anti, uh, Wall Street. Uh -huh. You know, she was, uh, she's the candidate of, of, of Main Street rather than Wall Street. She's a populist. And that, uh, that's an attractive um, uh, mantra for many people right now. The only problem that I could see with that is, I mean, that would be fine if ever, we didn't have ISIS and we didn't have what's going on in Iraq and Iran and Israel and Palestinian. I mean, if everything was just pleasant, it would be wonderful for having somebody. But we, I, I see that we need some, like, so, like a, somebody that really, like a hawk that can really, um, you know, help settle some of these really traumatic issues and mm -hmm. she's she's too nice <laughs> I mean, she, she's like a sweet well, a sweet lady yeah. uh, and she you know I but that like, would be see that would be if you think along those lines that would be a positive then for senator for vice president uh, Biden mm -hmm. because when he was senator Biden he was very involved with foreign affairs and, and chair of the foreign affairs committee well isn't so, there been talk about Kerry also I mean secretary of state John Kerry I mean he I mean if we're going to talk about um, you know people that really know the situation I mean, what better is John Kerry? I mean, even if you like him or you don't like him, he really knows the issues of he, what's going he, on. He knows the issues, but he's you know the, the the second Secretary of State in the Obama administration, and I think the perception is he's been a weaker Secretary of State than uh, Mrs. Clinton. Hmm. I don't know. I, I guess maybe it's a. I, I thought he. I I thought he was. He was more. He, he was more verbal because when mm -hmm. she was Secretary of State, it was. It was, she never gave as many interviews. She was more quiet, I thought. I mean, she did things behind the scene. I'm sure uh -huh. she did a lot of stuff <laughs> behind the scene. But he, he's like, I'm going to Israel. I'm going to Palestine. I'm going, you know, he really yeah. is more verbal. Yeah, but, you know, Hillary Clinton was the Secretary of State when Osama bin Laden was assassinated, mm -hmm. and that was a feather in her cap mm -hmm. and the Obama administration's foreign policy. Uh, Kerry, he's burdened now with the situation with ISIS right mm -hmm. now. Uh, well, then and, I'm and saying it, if Mrs. Clinton doesn't run, I oh, rather, as, a, can, well, as I, a candidate rather than, you know, I mean, along with yeah. her too. I mean, I, mean, I was probably um, thinking that if she didn't run that I would see John, John Kerry may, over uh, Elizabeth but, Warren. Yeah, I but don't think. forget Senator Kerry did lose that campaign in 2004. Um, and I, I don't believe he has an interest in running mm -hmm. for president again. Okay. okay, because, well, yeah, but you never know. You never you, know. They in always in, say in, in politics, you never yeah. know. You never yeah. knew. People say, well, Richard Nixon had that, that speech in California. He was angry, and right. that was the end of his political career. And then Richard Nixon was resurrected and, right. and, you know, and, and won that election in 68. So you never know. In 66, nobody, Nixon was completely out. He was an angry man. He had no political future, and then he wins the presidency in 68. So you never know. Right. I mean, they, they always say, we, I'm, I'm not going to run, or I, I, right. I, I'm not even thinking of it. Like even uh, Jeb Bush just came out. Um, the last time, I think it was about six months ago, it was on one of the talk shows, and he said he wasn't, you know, he wasn't interested. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, his son recently was on a talk show yeah. and said that his dad, well, yeah, that's a possibility. Now, when his son comes on a show and says it's a possibility, <laughs> it isn't like somebody, you know, like George Stephanopoulos thinking, oh, maybe it's a possibility. Right, right, right. I would, I would be shocked if Jeb Bush would, would get the, uh, the Republican nomination for president. I don't think he's going to announce. I don't think that there will be three... Uh, President Bush's in this country. I, I think I think we those... should make a bet on this one because okay. I think it's going to be Clinton Bush. Very I interesting. Think that, that is my Very interesting. Yes. now, Jeb. What he does have is he has a wife, uh, a Latino wife. Exactly. He f speaks fluent Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think this is just my personal opinion, and I'm a political commentator. I think the Bush brand has been tarnished by Bush too, and I think that's going to affect. Uh, Jeb Bush. Okay, let's put it this way then. What about Clinton's uh, Clinton 
won, could that be tarnished by Clinton won? That, that there, believe me, there are plenty of people who feel that I've had enough, they say collectively we've had enough of the, the Clintons. There are some people that feel that way. But again, I think the Democratic base, uh, the activist base, uh, is just very psyched up right now to have Mrs. Clinton as the candidate. Yeah, there will be some people mm -hmm. who say, ah, I've had enough. I don't want to see Bill Clinton as the, uh, the first gentleman. The I first guess gentleman. that I think that's what you'll call him, the first yeah. gentleman, not the first lady. Uh, I, I think there are a lot of Clinton haters out mm -hmm. there, but uh, I think Hillary Clinton, the perception of Hillary Clinton is that she's a very strong individual, uh, a strong woman, and many people in this country feel the time has arrived to have a woman as president. Yeah, she may be very good because she, it being Secretary of State, and she, you know, yeah. had to go through all. She saw a lot of what's yeah. going on all over the world. Absolutely. And as I don't know, see, when she was uh, pres the president's wife or the uh, madam, um, yes. what do they call the first lady? First lady. First lady. Uh, Madam First Lady, you know, when they went abroad, mm -hmm. it was always they got dressed up yeah. and they were for, and they went to dances and dinners. And it's it all, was the a, social, the social, all the social. All the social. Thing, yeah. But when she was Secretary of State, you know, she saw a lot of, right. you know, right. and what happened in all, you know, mm -hmm. Boca Raton, you know, not Boca Raton, Boca, um, Benghazi. Benghazi. Yeah, and, 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 ben, and Benghazi, and Benghazi, you know, that might hurt her in the, yeah. in the campaign. She, you know, there, there was... It, it was a tragic situation there. Yeah, the ban the Benghazi, yeah. and, and especially it, it, it really because because uh, the the man that was killed uh, was a personal friend of hers right, too, right. and so it was a very traumatic experience for her. Mm -hmm. But she's you know she's not she's a strong lady. She's a strong lady, and right. I see her much stronger than Elizabeth Do Elizabeth Warren, right, not Elizabeth right. Doe, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, you know, Elizabeth mm -hmm. Warren doesn't mm -hmm. have the I don't think the, um, the experience right. in that type but of situation. But I, I, I really, th I really think it's a slam dunk if 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 um, if um, Mrs. Clinton would like to be president and she accepts the, I'm going to get the green light from the Democratic Party. She'll just win, I think, easily in, in whatever primary situations there are. She'll be the candidate. The bigger question: Who, who the Republican Party nationally is in a lot of ways damaged. Um, who will they? Run. Um, there's the the Rand Paul okay. wing of the party. Yeah, I have a whole yeah group there, of them there's right Rand there. Paul and Ted yeah. Cruz, the the Tea Party supporters. There's no way that a Tea Party candidate can win uh, the Republican nomination. Mitt Romney's yeah. name comes up now and then. I don't think Mitt Romney will run. I, 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 He's another one that they said, I won't run, but you never know about Yeah, well, Mitt, Mitt Romney, Romney and, and, and Jeb Bush, they could mm -hmm. raise money for the Republican Party, but I don't think they're going to run. Maybe somebody like Paul Ryan, one of the younger right. candidates, uh, you know, he, might, he, he might run, but it's, it's a real problem. Uh, the Republicans mm -hmm. will be talking a little bit about this, the Senate elections that are coming up this year. Now, they may be in a situation and that they're going to be taking the Senate as well as the House, but they still have a they're having difficulties finding uh, themselves nationally with a national leader. Yeah, because Chris Christie was the boy that they... Yeah, before they, Bridgegate. Before Bridgegate. Right. And there's Rick Santorium, uh, who uh, always keeps... He seems like always he's the, always the runner. Too I extreme, guess, too yeah. extreme. So I think yeah. in social social issues, he's too extreme. There's Scott Walker. Yeah. I have, I have Marco Rubio, who is another one. A uh, you know, Marco Rubio has a fascinating personal scenario, much like President Obama had. Uh, you know, his parents were Cuban uh, immigrants. They worked in hotels. They were mm -hmm. working class people. Um, he is pretty far to the right of the Republican Party, um, Marco Rubio, and he also he, besides his his term in in, in the Senate in, in Florida, he doesn't have a lot of experience. Uh, he had some experience in the Florida legislature. Um, I would be surprised if Marco Marco Rubio. He has a nice personal narrative, but it would it would surprise me if if he got the nod. Um, I I think Paul Ryan because of his experience, mm -hmm. uh, his youth. 
Uh, he has been a vice, president, vice presidential candidate. Right. You know, there might be a leaning towards him. But again, uh, it, it would be a tough road, I think, for a Republican to win the presidency. That's why I think that Jeb Bush probably would be. First of all, he's, as you said, he's married to a Latino yeah. woman. And so Latinos probably may think, you know, even though a lot of Latinos vote Democrat, mm -hmm. uh, they may consider because yeah. of his 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 wife and also that he was a governor and a successful governor i think florida right i think so yeah. and uh, they did he, yeah. they, he was very well liked in yeah. florida and i think that he and he's um you know he's he he knows his, his father was right. the president <laughs> his, his brother was the president so you know i think but that i he don't may, i the, his big problem right now is that his name is bush and I, I really believe the Bush name is tarnished. Really, with, well, with 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 Bush two's experience, could, it could be. Yeah. But he, but I understand that he was the person that they really wanted pre to be president at that time. <laughs> over, in fact, Barbara Bush <laughs> thought that her that right, was the son right. that was going to be president. Right, right. And she was kind of, I think, kind of right, shocked right. when when he was that he didn't run in the mm -hmm. other, and George ran instead. Yeah, I think it shocked yeah. Barbara. I think so. So too. you know. You, you never know. You never know. Because, I, I, you know, it's lunch. Then we have a lunch bet. That's right. I just thought of that <laughs> lunch bet because I like lunch. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with lunch. Um, let's talk about the, the governor's race ah. right now. Um, I mean, we got Rauner and Quinn. Mm -hmm. And Quinn's been in office for how long now? Well, he's been governor since Bogoyevich uh, basically uh, was was forced to resign right. through the imp impeachment, so he has been um, governor now. Uh, was that two years or was it? A year? No, How long it was. Did he it have? was. Uh, he had. A, there was another year and a half in the. So so basically, uh, Quinn's been governor about five or, about five years now. Okay, so he's. You know, the interesting thing is, what, what always gets me is that when when the uh, opponent says, "Well, you didn't do that. You don't. You know. Oh yes, I'm going to be doing this in my next one. This in my next one, and I'm going to do that." Why didn't they do it? He's had all these years to do it. <laughs> you know, talk about education and funding the schools and all this. That his opponent says that he he cut early education. Uh, he um, you know he fa he's failed on crime and he's let offenders out early. And he and he now mm -hmm. he's saying, well, I in my next term this is going to happen. That's going to happen. <laughs> Why have you know? And this is what they always say. And the Why state, don't they the, do it in the terms that they have? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to yeah, me. The, the state's a mess. The state's a mess. And uh, Governor Quinn's problem is, I think, uh, the legislature. He's you know he's the governor. I think he has not shown strong leadership in Springfield. The the leader of the Democratic Party in Springfield is uh, Michael Madigan, who rules the House in Springfield. John Cullerton rules the Senate uh, in Springfield. Governor Quinn is really subordinate in a lot of ways to the wills of Mr. Madigan and, and, and Mr. Cullerton. And there's a perception with Governor Quinn that he has not been a strong leader. Um, Mr. Rauner has run a campaign that Springfield is a mess. Mm -hmm. And he blames everybody, especially Mr. Madigan and Mr. Quinn, and he wants his chance of riding the ship, this you know the ship of Illinois, which is sinking in in debt and uh, going nowhere, and in pension crisis, and but Mr. Rauner uh, has no political record to speak of, and he's he's basically saying that's my strength. I'm a business person. Sort of like Mitt, can, sort of like Mitt Romney. So yeah, I'm a I'm a and and in a lot of ways, his career. Rauner's career was similar to what Round, what, uh, what Romney did. Right. Yeah, it's basically working with failing companies. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. right, and failing and companies. Failing and companies. Making lots of money and Ma making you know, some of his money right. offshore. And But, you know, just because he makes money, maybe that's what we need. <laughs> because if we're, we're talking about that, we're, that Illinois is going broke, right. maybe what we need is somebody that knows how to make money, mm -hmm. and maybe they can make money for, you know, the state of Illinois. Yeah, that's true. But again, um, Mr. Rauner will have to face a Democratic, two Democratic houses the, in the General Assembly, the, 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 the Senate and the, the House. Uh, so 
how is Mr. Rauner going to make these legislative changes with, with two strong, you know, with, with Democratic uh, leg legislators basically a uh, very strong force against him? But, sometime, but doesn't sometimes a, a, a Republican governor works better with a Democratic mayor? Not, well, not in Illinois. Now, the reason why it, the, the, Mr. Rauner says, I'd like to make Illinois similar to some of the other states in the region, more friendly to business, lower, like, lower taxes. Like Texas? No, in the region. So oh, we we talk, we're talking about Wisconsin. Oh. We're talking about Indiana. He always talks about Mitch Daniels as being a great uh, uh, um, governor to emulate in Indiana, uh, govern, the governor in Kasich in Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and remember, the, the Texas governor came mm -hmm. to Illinois trying to get yeah. more companies to come to Texas, yeah. too. But again, Indiana and Ohio and, and, and Wisconsin, they had more pliant uh, Republican legislatures than Mr. Rauner would have in the state of mm -hmm. Illinois. It would, it would be very interesting. I think it would be very confrontational. And I know there's ways you can through administrative dictates, you know, they're, they're, you, can, you can do certain things, loading commissions, uh, setting a tone for, uh, for a corporate, you know, more business friendly uh, climate in the state of Illinois. But if you don't have a legislature that is enacting your agenda, it's going to be a problem. So it would be very interesting to see if Mr. Rauner uh, can get anything done if he is governor. You know, it's interesting. I think you mentioned to me earlier, and you could tell the viewers a little bit about uh, the, the lieutenant governor, because, <laughs> you know, the big thing is Rauner is charter schools, and he's a real big a right. biggie on charter schools, and that's public charter schools. And... Um, and Quinn is for the public schools, but who is he running with? Paul Vallis, yes, who, who, is, you know, yeah. who has created more charter schools. He was the one that really got charter schools going in the city of Chicago when he was heading, you know, when he was heading the Chicago Board of Education, the, the executive officer there. Then he went down to New Orleans and uh, post-Hurricane uh, uh, Katrina, the whole system, the public education system was so broken in, um, in New Orleans, and his solution was to create charter schools in New Orleans, Paul Vallis. Then he went to Philadelphia, and he started promoting charters in Philadelphia. Then he moved to Bridgeport, Connecticut, promoting as the superintendent mm -hmm. of education. Uh, and, and so he's Mr. Charter School Man, and <laughs> Pat Quinn, who's anti-charter school, selects him as the lieutenant governor, but it I, hasn't really been coming across as an issue. We talked about that, and it ha why hasn't it been coming out as an issue? Well, because I think people say lieutenant governors, they only come up if somebody dies, if the governor would die, or if the governor would go to, you know, would get indicted, and go, and to, go jail. to jail, which of course in <laughs> Illinois, yes. four governors in the last four decades have gone to jail. Right. So, yeah, so I, I don't, and really, what does a lieutenant governor do besides wait for the governor to, to disappear? They must have, they, <laughs> they must have some duty. Yeah, Maybe it's ceremonial. Ceremonial. Rib, rib, ribbon, ribbon, cutting, right. ribbon cutting. Yeah, because I went to something with uh, the, the lieutenant governor, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, the present one, yes, um, uh, Sheila Simon, Sheila Simon uh, and I went to something, and I actually went to hear Sheila Simon's band. Uh -huh. she, and um, since I play percussion, she asked me if she comes to Chicago if I would, you know, if I would help her out. In, if you know, if her percussionist doesn't show up, can I come and uh -huh. fill in? For her? I said, yes, I'd be delighted. To be I, in I, I, Sheila I have, Simon's band. I have to say this though, for when Pat Quinn, when Governor Quinn was Lieutenant Governor, he was passionate about veterans' issues, mm -hmm. and that was. His his passion, right? I know. And he would go. He would go to every veteran event mm -hmm. across the state of Illinois. So he kind of basically sliced out. This is. I'm going to be the the spokesperson in Illinois, the advocate for veterans. So you have to give him credit yeah, for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And we got. We, our time is going. We'd like to catch up with. This, the, what do you think about the uh, the uh, race between Dole and Schneider? Ah, the most competitive race in the state of Illinois. These are all, and we're, and we're yeah. talking about neck to neck yeah. because. Quinn and Rauner's neck to neck right now, and so is yeah. this other race yeah. neck to neck. Well, I, w I would say if Mr. Madigan uh, didn't uh, redistrict the 10th congressional district a certain way 
in 2010 to make it a little bit more democratic leaning. How could he do that? I mean, that's uh, gerrymandering and, I mean, how could, is well, that legal it, it, to do that? It's legal to do it and the Democrats have control of, of the legislature in Illinois. Look, the, in Texas, the Republican legislature made it a Republican mm -hmm. friendly. In Wisconsin, the more, you know, a Republican state with, with Scott Walker and a Republican legislature, so they made more Republican seats. Madigan made more Democratic seats. Mm -hmm. And also, so it's going to be very difficult. There are more Democratic voters in the 10th Congressional District. The level in, of enthusiasm right now, I think the Republicans would, they see the blood. They see there's an opportunity now to regain that seat. The question is, can Mr. Dold get out enough Republican voters and enough independent voters to override more Democratic voters. Will the Democratic voters come out for Mr. Schneider, Congressman Schneider, in this election? Do you so feel that the Democrats get their voters out better than the Republicans? Yes. Without, why, with, why is that? Without a, without How do they do that? Why do they well, say that? Be, because if you, you know, go back to, to the Obama presidential campaigns, the Democrats do very well on what's called GOTV, uh, get out the vote efforts. Uh, and a lot is basically working with constituencies. So. Right now, the African-American community pretty much votes Democratic, and uh, so that's a constituency that the Democrats have. Mm -hmm. The teachers' union, public service unions, these are Democratic constituencies. These are all organizations. You know, so you have leadership in the African-American community make sure that their constituencies get to the, uh, mm -hmm. the polling place. The and same the thing unions. with the unions. Mm -hmm. So the Republicans, on the other hand... And they make it easy. I think the polling places are at the union halls and with, everything, with, Whatever, right? yeah. Right nearby yeah. or something. So, yeah. So, and, and then um, one of the things that the Democrats have done much, much better than the Republicans, they've, they've used uh, social media in a much better way. They've accessed younger voters in a much better way than the Republican Party has. So I think you have to factor... So haven't they learned anything? I mean, haven't the Republicans they oh, seen this? Are they, you know, they're they have they're to, they're they're are they catching up? They're, they're catching up. They're having a problem. You know, Republicans have, they have problems with younger voters. Mm -hmm. The Republicans have problems with uh, African-American voters, mm -hmm. with Latino voters. These are, and women. So these are constituencies that are not going for the Republicans. But I think what's turning off some of the women now, and I know for myself, I hate this term, war on women. Uh -huh. Oh, I, when I hear war on women, I cringe. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, with this, all the wars going right. on right now, that is a terrible, that's really bad terminology. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women are really objecting to it. Yeah. So maybe they have to let go of that yeah. terminology because there's no war on women. Yeah. And I it, don't see and that. It's, and it's a reflection of the negative ads. Nation, yeah. Nationwide, $4 billion this mm -hmm. year, $4 billion.